How's it going? You guys look really nice from this side. How many of you, um, show me hands, have been to, this is our number six image, how many of you have been to four or more? How many, this is your first one ever? Welcome, this is fantastic. How many of you, um, give me applause if you're 22 or younger. Well, applause. Okay, 23 to 35. 36 to 47. <laughs> That's my girl. Okay, what does that leave? 48 and up. One of my most favorite things about Image is the way that we are all able to come together. I think we have so much to celebrate that we have in common. I love that we have such a great mix of different ages and different backgrounds in here, and that we can all benefit from each other. I, that's one of my most favorite things about Image. If you haven't been to Image before, the reason we named this gathering Image is based on um, a specific verse, and I put a bunch of verses on a card like this for you to take home. Hopefully you'll refer back to this. But our theme verse in the past has always been Ephesians 2.10, and it starts out like this. For we are God's masterpiece. How awesome is that? That we have been handpicked by God. I think so many times we as women buy into the lie that our culture tells us that wherever we are right now in our life, all we need to do is get one more level up. We just need to get to one more benchmark, and then we'll find that we feel worthy and loved. If, if we're a student, we just need to graduate, or we just need to meet the right guy, or we just need to have our family, or we just need to get our kids out of the house, or we just need to get our promotion, or we just need to get our finances organized, we just need to lose our baby weight. Whatever it is, we're always trying to get to that next level. Where we are is not quite right. We're not feeling quite as good as we'd like to, and our culture keeps telling us that if we can just get to one more benchmark, that that's when we're going to find that feeling of acceptance and love that we're craving. But girls, that is not true. Because we take our image, we take our identity from Jesus Christ. And he is the one who says that we are worthy. And he loves us no matter what. And he is not trying to make us get to another level. He's not waiting for us to be thinner or richer or smarter than we are now. The Bible tells us that God loves us exactly as we are right now. And he can't love us more because we achieve some other level. Am I buzzing around, ringing out there? Is my microphone ringing? Is it just me? Okay. Let me just finish up by saying that God handpicked you. The Bible says that he has your name engraved on his hand, and he will not let you go. We are daughters of the Most High God, and that is why we named this event Image, because that is where we take our image. But tonight, I want to kind of turn a corner a little bit, and I want to look at the end of that verse. So look at the rest of it with me. We are God's masterpiece. He made you individually, unique, one of a kind. He created us anew, just like Melissa was talking about. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus, but why? So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. I want to talk to you tonight about becoming somebody's miracle. A lot of us are looking for a miracle. We're hoping and longing for a miracle in our own lives. But I want us to look outside ourselves. Start to look around and see people in whose lives you can be a miracle. You can become a miracle. God uses people. And that is how he gets his job done in, on the earth. And we are the people he uses. Here is something so cool about the way God made us. He wired us up so that our joy is connected to our giving. When we give, when we share, when we bless people, we get a feeling of joy ourselves. When we lift somebody up, we get lifted up too. And God put that into our DNA so that when we watch a YouTube video and it's somebody coming home from Iraq and it's somebody's getting blessed, it just fills you up on the inside, right? That's what we love to watch because God made us that way that we are blessed to be a blessing. And the reason I feel like some of us are unhappy is because we have gotten so ingrown. We only care about our own problems and our own needs and our own wants, whatever goal we're working on. But we need to start looking outside ourselves. 
We, start, we need to start seeing other people who need a blessing from us, and that is the way that we can get that feeling of fulfillment and joy that we are looking for. There's somebody in your life, somebody in your life that needs the joy that only you can bring. And I wish that we would wake up every morning and say, Lord, show me on purpose today. Bring somebody across my path who I can bless, who has a need that only I can meet. Might be, it might be your spouse that needs that special touch. It might, be, it might be your kids that need some encouragement. It might be a friend or neighbor. It might be a total stranger. What about... What about the guy who brings pizza to your house? What if you gave an extra $20 to him? You never know when that miracle, that small gift can completely change a person's life. You don't know when that small phone call, that small note of gratitude might be the one thing that keeps that person pressing forward. When Jeff and I were first married, we were, we were po. We were so poor, we couldn't afford the O and the R. We were po. And we decided to really splurge one day, and we went out for breakfast at the Baker Square. And we had a skillet breakfast. You guys know what that is? It's like the potatoes, it's the whole thing. Okay, it's the whole ball of wax, and it was a big deal for us. We had no money, and we had our skillet breakfast, and uh, when they brought it to our table, we held hands, and we prayed, and we thanked God for that meal, and we ate our meal, and when we were finished, the server came over, and she said that your check has been covered. Somebody paid for your bill, and so we started to look around to see who we knew in there that would be willing to bless us like that. That was big, and we didn't see anybody we knew. We couldn't recognize anybody in there, so when the server came back, we had to ask her. Who, who in here gave, who, who gave that gift to us? And she, she pointed out, what's this older couple sitting here eating their breakfast? And so after we finished, we went over and talked to them, and we said, we're so sorry, we don't recognize you. Do we know you from, from church or from school or something? And they said, no. No, we think that it's so rare to see a couple hold hands and pray before they eat a meal that we, we just felt prompted and inspired that we should pay for your meal. Girls, that was like a miracle to us. That couldn't have been more than $20, but clearly it made a huge impact because I remember it right now, and it happened <clears throat> years ago, <laughs> quite a long time. I want to read you what the Bible says about sowing and reaping. We know that's a, that's a principle that God invented. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. But whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God, listen to this, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. A friend of mine uh, was caught in a rainstorm. He was inside a car, and he saw a group of ladies walking on the sidewalk next to him, and they did not have an umbrella. And they were holding the papers over their head, you know, the way you do, and it was wrecking their hairdos and their handbags. And he pulled over, and he had an old, you know, crusty umbrella that had been on the floorboard of his car for years and years, and he rolled down the window, and he gave it to them. Well, they acted like that was a miracle. Uh, You know, he provided for their need. And not a week later... (laughs) He was at a hotel, it was raining again, and the bellhop had a huge umbrella. You know those big, double size, nice, super expensive umbrella. And as he got into the car, the bellhop said to him, do you have, a, do you have an umbrella, sir? And he said, well, no. <laughs> and he said, we have plenty of these, you should take this. Girls, you cannot outgive God. Don't worry about holding on to that umbrella in case it rains next week and you might need it. When you get an opportunity to give and share, you should take it. You should take that chance. God said to Abraham, I will bless you so that you can be a blessing. So if you want to get blessed, you need to start asking yourself one question. Am I willing to be a blessing? Some of us are not getting blessed the way we should because we are not willing to share it. We're worried that God doesn't remember us and that he's not going to give it generously. But the Bible promises that he will. And that we will not be sorry any time we take the opportunity to bless somebody else. Look at Jesus' life. He's the model for us. We know that every day he went out looking for a way to make a difference. Looking for somebody lonely to be comforted. Looking for a miracle he could do to somebody. Looking to bless some children. Let's look at what the Bible says about him. It's in Acts 10. They're looking back. 
This is a message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. That's the Holy Spirit that's in you and me, same one. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. That's the same ministry that we should have, girls. We don't need to make it complicated. You don't have to know how to preach. You don't have to understand a bunch of doctrine. You just have to go out there and get busy doing good. You need to be willing to give a compliment or hold a door open for somebody. When you go to get coffee for yourself, get one for your coworker at the same time. Look for ways. Be aware of those around you and try to bless them. Be, have the mindset that I'm trying to find somebody who I can bless today. My parents were great examples of this in my life. And quietly, behind the scenes, I noticed as I was growing up that they sometimes took young couples out to dinner to nice restaurants that they probably couldn't afford otherwise. And one time, uh, I remember they bought a suit for my uh, student pastor because he was graduating from seminary and didn't have anything to wear. And it wasn't until last summer we had a family meeting that I found out that my parents, they own a home where a retired missionary couple lives. And they help the couple across the street with the down payment for their house. And that they share their timeshare with a growing family who otherwise probably couldn't go on vacation. And I know some of you are thinking, well, I couldn't do all that. And that's true. But you can do something. We need to get creative. God will show us ways that we can bless people. Look at Galatians 6.10. Therefore, Whenever, when? Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone. That's telling us if you get the opportunity to bless somebody, don't wait around. Make the most of that opportunity. Don't say I'm busy, maybe next time. Don't miss out on the opportunity to bless somebody else, to lift someone else up, and you'll get lifted up at the same time. One time when I I was a brand new mom, And you girls know how it feels to be a brand new mom. I was pretty tired, pretty emotional, feeling pretty overwhelmed. And my mom had come to help me, but she doesn't live here in town, and she had gone already, and I was not feeling equipped and ready to be flying solo. And right at that time, God sent a sweetest, sweetest grandma from this church, and she brought dinner to my house. And I didn't care what she brought. It could have been anything. All I cared about was that she took the time from her day to make something and bring it on over to me and give me a hug and tell me I was going to make it through. And that's a ministry we have here. It's called Caring Meals. And I have uh, taken meals to people a lot of times, but until you are on the receiving end, you don't realize what a miracle that is. It is a miracle in your life when somebody shows that kind of love and blesses your life like that. On another occasion, uh, when this was, Rachel was about two, and I was about a month maybe from delivering my second baby, and my girlfriend called me and she said, I want to come over for the afternoon and just watch Rachel for you so you can go somewhere quiet by yourself. Tell me that's not a miracle. (laughs) That was a miracle. All my book reading friends, where are you? Here's what I did. I went by myself to the quietest corner of the library I could find, and I put my feet up, and I read the book all afternoon. That was a miracle. God uses people, and you never know when that small gesture, that small gift, that kind word, that encouraging hug you give somebody could be the thing that turns it around for them. Take the opportunity. God uses people. And some of you are thinking, that's, I, that's not something I can do either, but let me tell you this. God works through connections. I just talked to somebody tonight about this. It's the perfect illustration for what I'm talking about. Do you know somebody who is an honest mechanic that you can help out a sister? Do you know somebody who's a good plumber or a good tutor or whatever it is? You can connect those people, and that is a ministry. One time when Jeff and I were on a particular diet, uh, one of our particular diets, we were getting a lot of meat from the Gateway Market when it was out here in West Glen. And through visiting that store a lot of times, we got to know a butcher who worked there. And he was so friendly, and he was really knowledgeable, and he really went out of his way to 
to, you know, accommodate the things we needed. And he was a great, you know, he did a great job. And so one of the days after we had seen him in the store, Jeff came home and he wrote a letter. He didn't write it to the butcher. He wrote it to the manager of the Gateway Market. The next time we went in the Gateway Market, that butcher had a smile on his face. He said, you'll never guess what happened to me. We had a staff meeting. And the whole staff was there. And my boss got up and he read a letter. And it was about me. And it was from you. <laughs> and you know, we always got the best treatment ever <laughs> at that butcher from then on. But we can tell, we can compliment other people. And that doesn't take anything away from us. That just lifts up that other person. And anybody can do that. It doesn't take any money at all. It just takes a small bit of our time. We wanted to give you girls an opportunity to really get some practical ways to make this happen. So we gave you two things tonight. When you sat down at your spot, you got a little card like this. I hope you did. I know there's a lot of buzz around about random acts of kindness. I read a lot about it on blogs and see it on websites. And this is the kind of thing that really gets my engine going. So I am praying this is my prayer for you guys tonight, that you will take a card like this, and if you get one that doesn't apply to you or you don't want to do, just switch around. And if you're like me and this kind of thing really floats your boat, get a bunch of them. And I want to hear what happens when you are willing to step outside your comfort zone and bless somebody else. Here's the other thing. You guys all got a white bag. Looks like this. This is it. Every time that we visit a women's shelter or a food pantry, there's one particular need that doesn't get met. And it's a need that's specific to women. And you all know what I'm going to say. It's feminine protection. And nobody wants to put the bag of feminine protection into that shopping cart out there in the atrium. So we gave you a very discreet white bag. Because let me tell you something, if you are the person experiencing the need for the feminine protection, no truckload of canned goods is going to help you. <laughs> and if you know somebody who will provide for that need, you know that that person is your soul sister. Is that right? You have a bond that will never be broken. So this is just between you and me. Nobody else has to know what's in these bags. But next time you're at the supermarket and the drugstore, I want you to just fill up this bag. My team's calling this the Tampy bag. <laughs> and we're just going to fill up those shopping carts. I can't stand the idea that somebody out there is trying to decide whether they can feed their kids or whether they can <laughs> buy their feminine needs. <laughs> we can provide that, girls. We can take care of that for them. Let's get practical. Let's get real. The closest thing to the heart of God is when we help another person. Let's look, look at Luke. It talks about giving. And listen to what this says. When you think about out giving God, it says this. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over, more than you had to begin with, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. When you make an investment in others, then you plant the seed, and that's the seed that God uses to enrich your own life. If you need a miracle today, you need to start by becoming a miracle for somebody. Do your kids play together on a ball team? What if you organized a carpool? That wouldn't take any time. That You're going to go anyway. That's no time at all. Do you know somebody that you can encourage with an actual handwritten note? Or maybe you can write 10 emails in that amount of time. And you can change somebody's life. That's an investment of what, 10 or 15 minutes? What if you were willing to be a greeter who welcomes people in when they come to church? Or somebody who checks in kids? And tells them how happy you are to see them. And reflects the love of Christ to them when they first come in this building. That's a commitment of maybe 30 minutes. And don't think that that does not have a huge impact. People tell us every week, I made a decision about church based on the people I saw on the way in. I made a decision about church based on the people who were in my kids' class. 
That is a huge impact for the kingdom of God, and it will take 30 minutes and no training at all. Girls, we need to get involved. We need to be creative, and we need to be looking out for ways that we can bless people. I have a dream. Just like Martin Luther King, I have a dream tonight, girls. I have a dream that if Wayne needed people to shovel the sidewalks or weed the, weed the flower beds out in front of the church, there would be so many people volunteering he wouldn't know what to do with them. And every time that Debbie was organizing something for kids or there was youth church going on or any number of other things going on, every time Mindy was organizing the greeters, that we would have so many volunteers, so many people welled up with joy, so many people wanting to share because they understand that when they lift somebody up, they get lifted up too, that we wouldn't know what to do with all the volunteers. And that then it would spill over and it would fill our church, and then it would spill out into our neighborhoods and our communities, and it would spill out into all the food pantries and all the great other ministries that are going on. And then when I told you we have meals from the heartland and we're all going to go together, that I have so many girls I wouldn't, have to, I wouldn't know what to do with them. We can do it, girls. We can do that if we really understand the value of blessing other people. Do you know how many people are lonely? Who for them... A check-in, a phone call, a dinner with you, getting together with coffee would be like a miracle. Don't miss out on the opportunity. God tells us in James 127, pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. We already know that these things are high on God's list. He tells us right there. Some of you guys are like me. And uh, you feel that prompting, feel like you want to do something good, you want to give an extra $20 to that server, but then you look at her and you think, she looks okay. I mean, she seems like she's getting along fine, right? So, Lord, is this really from you? Let me give you a hint. Some of you have felt that prompting in your heart. Some of you right now, even as I'm talking, God is bringing ideas into your head. You are thinking of creative ways. People are entering your head. You're thinking of things that you could do, but you're wondering, and you feel like maybe you just need a couple confirmations and a a prophecy and a, a sign, and then you'll know. So here it is, girls. I'm giving you the word of the Lord right now. You don't need to pray about it. You just need to go out and bless people. He will provide the opportunities, and all you have to do is take action. Jeff and I went to a marriage conference not too long ago, and he said something so profound. First, he had us make a list of things that we should do to improve our marriage, but then he said this, and here's the kicker. you got to do the things that are on the list. So we can all go out of here with great intentions and thinking, I'm going to write a note, and I'm going to make a phone call, but I am calling you girls to have some action behind that. I'm calling you to fill up a bag the next time you're at the store. I'm calling you to write a note. I'm calling you to give a hug to somebody you know that's lonely. Actually stop and talk and find out how they're doing. See if there's any way that you can help them. Help them make a connection with somebody. Don't hang on to that umbrella thing that you might need it for later. The other thing that happens to us sometimes is that uh, we see a need, we feel that burden, And then we go to somebody on the church staff and say, I saw a couple and they need some encouragement, so can you you do that? Or I I know this girl and she really needs to, you know, she's really lonely and needs, needs some prayer. Can you do that? Girls, if God is putting that desire and that concern in you, then you're the one he's wanting to step up and make the difference. He's prompting you. He would never give you that impulse if he didn't mean for you to act on it. And the enemy is never the one prompting us to do good. Every good gift is from the Father. So if you are feeling an emotion and a desire like me, you get excited about doing something good, about seeing your blessings overflow onto other people, that's from God. And you don't need to worry about whether you should do it or not because he's promised to bless you either way. So let's get up each day. Let's get up every day. And make it an assignment that we're going to do one good thing for somebody today. And let's remember that our joy is connected to our giving. I want to be a joyful person. I want to be known as a giver and not a taker. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I want to show other people that it's joyful to give. And when they're around me, they feel that that pleasure that God has wired up in us. 
So start to pay attention to the people around you. Start to listen for their needs so that then you can jump in there and bless them. Meet that need. Make the difference. And if you'll develop this lifestyle of giving and sharing, you'll find that not only will your own life be more fulfilled and more uh, full of love and joy, but that is the seed that God is going to use to enrich you and to grow you up. I want to finish up by just telling those of you who do not know Jesus how you can know him. Here is the thing. Each of us does things that are wrong. We make mistakes and we make bad choices. And those are the things that the Bible calls sin. And the reason that God can't have sin is because he is holy. And that is what separates us from him. And the way that we can be made one with him is through Jesus Christ, his son. Jesus Christ came to the earth and he was perfect. And when he died, he paid the penalty for our sins on the cross. And because he rose from the dead, we have the hope of spending our eternal life with him. That is the good news. That is the best news there is. And if that is something that you want in your life, all you have to do is this. Tell him, Father, I understand that I have made mistakes and that's why I'm a sinner. But I accept Christ, that he paid my penalty and that he is the one who paved the way for me to have an eternal life in heaven. And now I lay down my own wants and my own needs and I'm willing to let Christ be the new leader of my life. When that happens, when you cross that line of faith, that's what we call around here getting born again. If you get born again, I want you to do two things. First of all, I want you to tell somebody and I want you to read your Bible because God's word to us is through the Bible and that is how we hear him. But the other thing I want you to do is to get around some other Christians. I want you to come on back to church on a Sunday. It won't be as cute as this and the food's not quite as good. We do have coffee and donuts. We don't have any cupcakes, which is sad. <laughs> but I want you to come back and experience more of God's love because the more you know about him, the more deeply you will fall in love with him. I am so excited for the opportunity to share with you girls. I've been sort of on a high all week because of this. And I could, I could never thank you enough for coming out and for bringing your friends. And I hope that you will pray with me right now. Father, we have been so blessed to be here together tonight. We know that you have great plans for our lives. You've promised, you have told us that each of us is uniquely equipped to do special gifts that only we can do. Nobody else can take our place. And Lord, we don't want anybody to. We want to be the ones to make a difference. We want to make a difference in our own homes and in the schools where our kids go and in their sports teams and at work, at the gym where we work out, in the restaurants and coffee shops, in the places where we serve. Father, everywhere we go, we want to be known as people who are loving and giving you made it clear in the word how we should act, and we want to follow you, Lord, with everything that's in us. Help us to be difference makers. If this room full of women could get on fire for you, we could do stuff we could never have imagined. So take our lives, Lord, take us. Thank you that you find us worthy and that you want to use us. What an amazing thought that is. Thank you for bringing us here together tonight. You are so worthy, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, girls.